Excellencies, distinguished guests, captains of industry, ladies and gentlemen. I think the MC has done part of our job for us. But we're excited and we're happy that we can call you within a very short while and you can join us at this very important interactive session. For the next two, three minutes, I'm probably just going to share with you some of the statistics that you know, but we too often forget. And at the end of the day, tie those statistics with the reason why we believe a renewed hope for Nigeria with a greater Lagos rising is the team and the context in which we can indeed build a bigger nation for ourselves and a state that is functional for all. I'm sure we all know that even before the census that will come up later in the year, we usually toy that Lagos population is well over 20 million, 23, 22, 24, and this population has also been now confirmed by the population, sorry, by the number of um, PVCs and the registrations that we have seen um, INEC um, turnout. So indeed, we believe that the population of Lagos is closer to 25 million than um, 20. And it's a city, it's a city state that has almost all tribes of the country, over 300 tribes that indeed they call Lagos homes. And in that whole contraption, Lagos represents less than 0.4% of the total land mass of our country. You know, Nigeria is 900 and something thousand kilometers. Lagos is under 4,000, 365,000. Um, sorry, 3,560 3, or thereabout, you know, and, and so. So if you put that in context, and if you also remove the one third water that you see just behind us here and all around Lagos, so indeed, it's just like a tiny little dot. Um, the real land area is less than 0 0.27, you know, of which we will have over 10% of the population of this country. Um, the GDP of Lagos is clearly over 120 billion right now, so which makes it closer to 30% of the GDP of our country. And of course, the GDP is bigger than the GDP of Kenya, it's bigger than the GDP of Ghana, it's bigger than the GDP of Ivory Coast. And so you can see that indeed your city, your state, is in itself a big country that we're all just struggling you know, to fit into. In terms of those GDP sizes, it will be the sixth to seventh largest you know, economy in Africa. Um, people have toyed and said that, yes, our IGR is 50 billion, and I'm seeing some parties you know, trying to lay you know, some very, very wrong numbers and say, ah, because they collect 51 billion. We have not even there yet. You know, the size of this city, we need to double those numbers, right? So we're even still doing 50 and 60. We haven't scratched it at all. But so in all of those collections as well, you know the challenges that comes, you know, with a bigger city like us, you know. Even the amount of money it costs us to keep the city functional, resilient, the amount of amount we spent to clear out you know, containers that fall on the road to respond to emergencies, to respond to fire incidents, to go into Ogun State and rescue citizens and all of it, you know, speaks to the reason why those ideas have to go up. And some of you organize private sectors here. We need to be able to agree to team with us, you know, and see how we grow those numbers very, very quick, you know, so that we can indeed offer a lot more. And of course, you know that Lagos is home to headquarters of close to 70% of all large corporations in our country is the largest food basket in the entire sub-Saharan region, meaning that, you know, um, um, we, 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 we consume almost everything that comes in. But we're trying to take ourselves from that. Even if we cannot feed ourselves completely, at least let us be able to intervene and be able to um, um, attract investment in also how we get to feed this huge um, population. Of course, you know that Lagos is home to entertainment and technology hub, not only in Nigeria, but the entire African continent, um, which this, 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 this industry now is inching close to about 5% of our GDP. Um, very recently, you saw a Lagosian, right? He, he grew up in Lagos here. He went to school here. He became the first female Grammy Award winner. And several, several others that you have seen. You know, for us as a government, we continue to activate that sector we continue to encourage that sector. We continue to definitely, you know, see how we can help 
grow that sector even under you know, our, our team's agenda. And of course, looking at technology, right, Lagos continue to remain the tech startup in Africa. With, in the last year, year and a half, we've seen investment of over a billion you know, in tech startups alone. You know, we're building hyperscale data center. We're building end-to-end -end, you know, um, commercial um, 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 scale-up um, data um, investment. We're doing 3,000 kilometers of it, about 2,800 of it, fiber, you know, connectivity, ducts um, in, in the city, and all of the major telcos, you know, have, you know, a significant percentage, you know, of their tele-density here in Lagos. Fitch also, I mean, rated us on all of our um, borrowing, a triple A, which is for the second year um, running. So what that tells us is that indeed, you know, um, we're, we're doing all of these things, you know, knowing fully whether people are watching and we're being held accountable, you know, with even some of the finances, you know, that we're projecting. Um, so, but, but given the size, given the issues that we see, we know that Lagos can do a lot more and we want to do a lot more. In terms of numbers, Lagos certainly will require about a billion to build only a climate resi resilient you know, infrastructure. We were at the COP, COP27 um, in Egypt late last year, where we make a very strong case as to why you know, the entire world needs to, needs to listen to Lagos and need to support us to be able to be able to develop you know, a very robust climate resilient infrastructure because they are in action. Um, it is going to cost us a lot more. You know, our, 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 you know, our, our attempt not to do it you know, has a larger consequence you know, um, within you know, our community. And we've done the numbers. We've given them all of the projects that can fit you know, into this resilient infrastructure and we're taking it up to be able to, to work with them. You know, under our team's agenda, which has been our economic driving um, um, pillars in the last three and a half years, you know, which sort of also seek to push forward um, 20, 25 years when we started with the 10-point agenda. We're just getting up and we're identifying in critical areas what are the immediate needs of our, of our citizens. In transportation and traffic management, um, we've intervened in almost a thousand road projects, you know, in the last um, three and a half um, years, um, 650 sectional road rehabilitation, We've done palliative of about 150 of them, and we've built new roads of about 125 kilometer. Um, in our ferry service, which is also one of the ways in which we want to quickly move people from one part of the city to another, we've, um, we've almost completed you know, our 17 ferry stations. About seven of them have actually been completed, and we have intervened in procuring you know, um, ferry um, um, in, 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 in the city. We're actually also expecting another set of about 25 um, ferries that would help be able to move people from one part of the city um, or the other. Of course, you know that we have intervened in all of the three um, public transportation, you know, um, 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 bus, the last mile, the medium capacity, and also the taxis. Um, in total, we've intervened for about over 3,000, you know, um, capacity in those areas, be it the high capacity buses, the medium capacity, the last mile, or or the lag ride. Why we're doing all of this is for us to be able to give our citizens option, choices as into what mean of public transportation they want to go you know, on with. And of course, you know that we're indeed excited or able to complete the first phase of our blue line, um, um, which is from, sorry, from Marina to, to Mile 2. Um, the Honorable Minister um, sitting here is only just my bon. He created the the template for that, for that blue line rail infrastructure. And we're indeed happy that we cut the tape, even when he had the vision, you know, to have started it, you know. And um, we're happy that in the next one or two months, it should be fully, fully operationalized. Because what we're doing now is to ensure that everything, all the testing, you know, um, that needs to happen is actually, you know, um, um, a, an electric, you know, um, rail infrastructure. So we need to be sure that you know, we've, do, we've done proper wall off on all of the alignments so that we don't have fatality, we don't have people crossing you know, the rail track at any point, so that we don't have I mean, um, um, people not understanding that this is not a diesel fired engine, these are you know, electric fired engine. And 
Within the next one or two months, there will be a lot of stakeholder movement to understand how you need to embark and disembark in a real infrastructure. But for us as a government, thank you very much. Uh, Minister himself is clapping, please join him. <laughs> but for us as a government, it's the red line that we are almost completing that is even a lot more interesting for us. The red line is bigger, you know, is in a longer corridor. We conceived it too when I was in his cabinet, you know. The red line was an easier sell for us, but the PDP government at that time did not even allow us to touch that rail corridor. And it was the old rail corridor for all of you that have lived in Lagos for 40 years, 45 years, 35 years from Oyingbo, all the way, you know, going towards Agbado. So we've retracted some of them. We're building seven stations concurrently. We're building four bridges, you know, concurrently on that rail track. And so we're excited that it should be ready, you know, before April, you know, and you can see our iconic station um, coming out in Ikeja. There's a building on top of it. On, by the time you get to Ikeja, you see a massive, massive building on your right. Um, it's, not, it's not just a supermarket, you know, it's a real, you know, um, infrastructure. That will be the biggest terminal on, on the red line. And so all of these things are the things we promise. We promise an integrated urban mass transportation system where people can use either the rail infrastructure the road infrastructure, or the waterways infrastructure. Using a single, you know, um, carry card solution where you can hop in and hop off, you know, and be able, you know, to, to transact and reduce journey time. You know, because the whole idea is to reduce journey time, is to save money, and to reduce, you know, whatever traffic gridlock we have on our roads right now. Of course, Lagos was also the major um, 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 negotiator and facilitator, you know, at the completion of you know, of the Lekki Deep Sea Ports. You know, when we came in, um, we, we, we signed, you know, with, with the Chinese a 670 million, you know, um, dollar facility, which they promised us that in two, two and a half years, they will deliver the, the, the ports. We're happy that Mr. President himself came, you know, to commission the port, and I think full operations will start, you know, um, in the next two, one or two months or so, when all of the T's and I's, you know, have, have, been, have been crossed. So what you begin to see is that you begin to see your city, you know, being a lot more efficient, you know, and understanding the role that it plays, you know, in the economy of, of, of our country. And I think the final one to just mention on that transportation is the all famous Fourth Milan Bridge. You know, um, a lot of my um, predecessors too, you know, had mentioned Fourth Milan Bridge. We're, we're excited that in our time, we will see the Fourth Milan Bridge. And, and the reason being that we've taken a very, very detailed time to take through um, concessionaires, you know, um, funders, you know, and investors. And we've done that by first ensuring that we can do for them a viable, feasible, viability and feasibility study, you know, which has been completed and which has led to the process that which, I mean, um, investors are now indeed I'm convinced that that 37 kilometer on water, on land, you know, um, um, road is, is visible. We're, we're at the stage where we're just finishing, you know, very detailed engineering, you know, design, you know, and, and, and being able to go into um, groundbreaking very, very, very soon. And we're hoping and believing that um, before we finish government, at least we should have completed a significant part of that 37 kilometer road. It's right from Aja, right, all the way will end up on Lagos Badagri, sorry, Lagos Ibadan Express Road, you know, with the border of Ogun State. So that's like an own, your own M25, and we believe it will completely, completely, you know, reduce journey time and ease out, you know, the bottlenecks that we we'll have on the island, you know, and, and, and better parts, you know, of, 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 of the mainland. Um, of course, we know that we're, with our plans on, you know, also we've gotten approval for the Lekki Airport, you know, that corridor has been a corridor that has continued to receive a lot of attention, and we believe that an airport is also important. BRF, when government went, he also conceived it, but some people took him to court. We've been able to take them out of the court and got the approvals, right? And, um, and we're happy, we're excited that, you know, the, the Lekki Airport too, you know, at some point will also start, you know, um, construction and we'll be able to deliver, you know, to to our citizens, you know, on health, environment, emergency response, there's been two additional hospitals that we have added on. You know, we're building, right now, we're building a 500-bed psychiatric hospital in K2 
a jury. You know, um, in Lagos, um, we're building a 280 bed in Ojo, in an IN General Hospital. We're building another new Mercy Children Hospital. I think one of our speakers just said that he was, they gave back to him at Mercy Children Hospital. He's inside Lagos Island. We're rebuilding it into a 10th floor, best, biggest pediatric hospital also on Lagos Island, where your children and your grandchildren can still point to that. That is a new Mercy Children Hospital. We're building an infectious disease research institute. COVID has taught us that we cannot rely on the world. You need to be able to build a template where if another pandemic do happen, Africa and Nigeria, and indeed Lagos, can respond. So we're building an infectious disease research you know, initiative. We also want to partake when there's time for, for, um, for vaccines and all of that. It's not only India and Europe. That should be the choice. We, know we want to be able to, to, to have a proper you know, um, um, research, infectious research you know, institute in Lagos, and the designs you know, are, are, are on track. Um, several, several interventions in, rap, in emergency. You, you saw that we've, we increased not only the personnel, but also equipment of Lagos State Fire Service. This is probably bigger than the Federal Fire Service right now. You know, we've built six, we're building six additional fire stations. Three of them have been completed, you know, so that we can indeed, within five to 10 minutes, in whatever part of the city you are, we can respond to you. Nobody prays for an emergency, nobody prays for fire, but you must have a government and your city to respond in the event of a disaster, and we see all sort of containers drop off in Lagos almost on a daily basis. And within one hour, we have enough equipment to take them off the street so that you can continue you know, to enjoy you know, in your city. On education, technology, and the rest of it, there's been several, several interventions. We're excited you know, with the interventions we've done in education. A lot of our primary school teachers now have you know, handheld tablets in which they use. During COVID, it gave us opportunity to train most of them. You know, we recruited additional 8,000 or so new teachers, right? And so all of them have similar curriculum in all primary schools. And all of this intervention, we're beginning to see a growth, you know, an increase in enrollment of primary schools in our city. A lot of people are even taking their pupils out of private schools, you know, into our public, public primary schools. And for us, that is the way to, to do it. We have built over a thousand additional classrooms in less than four years. A thousand additional classrooms in different parts, you know, of, of, of the city. We have renovated about 250 libraries in some of these schools. And we've seen that there's been a growth trajectory in the population of our students in these schools. But I think one of the major ones that have interested us is, is to look at the, the results of our WAEC you know, um, students. We've seen a, a, a 100% you know, leap from the number of students that now pass WAEC English and Maths in credit you know, to over 80%. You know, in fact, the last WAEC result, we are about 82%, 83%. And we're excited with those interventions coming. We're not just doing it in education, we're also doing it in tech startups. You know, we've done a lot of, um, 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 we've given a lot of grants to, to, to tech startups, you know, in our, on our last week, you know, initiative, and also our knowledge innovation technology enterprise. There have been several, several, several interventions, you know, that, that, that we've done. Um, you know, Agri, people will say that, yes, Lagos is very tiny, what can you do in Agri? We've seen that we've, we've, we've just completed the biggest, the biggest um, rice mill in the whole of sub-Saharan Africa, and we're excited that it's now producing you know, rice um, um, for our citizens, uh, and we can continue to be a major intervention you know, um, in, in, that, in that space. And we have a very detailed, well-thought-out five-year agri master plan. And in that plan, we're building the biggest and here is the biggest market hub in the whole of Sub-Saharan Africa, again, in Epe. Before the end of this year, we will commission part of it. You know, it's a massive, massive investment on almost 2 million square feet you know, of land that we're building, you know, so that it becomes a, a big hub in terms of you know, cold chain, food chain, you know, and, and we're also creating areas where we can have feedlocks you know, for um, the animal you know, um, sector of, 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 of our businesses. And in all of this, we see 250 to 300,000 jobs being created directly you know, and, 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 and indirectly. Um, suffice to say, 
that in housing, we've done a lot of interventions. We've commissioned about 17 different housing projects. We've had added close to over 4,000 housing stock in, in, into, into, into the city. Um, as I begin to round up, because I want us to actually have you know, an interaction. I want us to have you know, a, a, a process where we give you time to ask us questions. You know, and some of my um, um, colleagues, you know, my brothers and sisters that will be joining us here, so that we all can have you know, the time to um, take forward some of um, the various ideas that we have. I can continue on entertainment, on security, on justice, but I'll keep it until when my bon, you know, maybe ask me some very definite or direct questions for me to be able to answer them. You know, for us, one of the things that we see, and which is why we have chosen this caliber you know, of discussants to come forward, is to look at the Lagos story, is to ask ourselves, with all of the people that are out there campaigning, you know, and talking about taking Nigeria forward, is to ask them, where is their pedigree? Who are the people that they have led? Who are the people that have worked with them? Who are the people that they have created? What are they doing? Let everybody come out and show and raise the, the hands of people that indeed have worked with them. This is a legal story that I want all of you to see, to appreciate, and to know that if indeed your Lagos has taken you from where we used to be to where we are, we can do the same as well in our country, Nigeria. And that's why the renewed hope of Nigeria is critical for us, but we also believe that your Lagos, our Lagos is rising. Thank you very much, and I will...